Good evening. Still trying to figure out what I did to be assigned to follow Elvis Costello tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when you think of a veteran, what image comes to mind? A bedraggled guy on the sidewalk, panhandling for change, a PTSD-addled fellow sitting on his sofa in a darkened room, a group of old men sipping beer in a VFW hall. Let me paint a different picture for you. In April 2010, a quarter-mile-wide tornado struck the town of Valonia, Arkansas. Schools, homes, churches, all of them were ripped apart as if they'd been built by matchsticks. In the wake of the devastation, the usual helping hands arrived. The National Guard, the Red Cross, Good Samaritans, and a bunch of men and women clad in identical gray t-shirts emblazoned with the words Team Rubicon. They came there to help residents comb through the debris for their possessions and their keepsakes, then haul away what couldn't be salvaged. Who are you guys? One of the locals asked. We're veterans, they said. We're here to help. In the wake of the tornado, Team Rubicon mobilized as an army battalion might. Within 24 hours, there were a couple of scouts on the ground, got there just as National Guard troops were rolling in. Two days later, there was an advance party on the ground, setting up tents, bringing in chainsaws and wheelbarrows and shovels and axes. And five days later, there were more than two dozen Team Rubicon volunteers in Valonia. Some had driven from as far as 300 miles away, tossing their backpacks in their pickup trucks and driving through the night. Students who had taken a week off school, people who were self-employed, unemployed, even a few who had used vacation time to, to leave their jobs and come and help. After years in the military, loyally following orders, these men and women had earned the right to kick back and relax during moments of national crisis. But they wouldn't. When they saw the television images of the tornado's aftermath, they knew they had to help. I spent several days accompanying the Team Rubicon volunteers in Arkansas. Although I've spent the better part of five years in Iraq and Afghanistan, much of that time accompanying US troops, reporting on the conflicts for the Washington Post, I'm no veteran. I was there to learn more about Team Rubicon for a book I was writing with Howard Schultz. Our goal was to widen the aperture of the modern veteran experience and try to bridge the divide between our civilian and our military populations. Too often, our media has paid disproportionate attention to veterans who have committed crimes, those struggling in their transitions, those grievously wounded. And those are important stories to tell, but there's been comparatively less attention paid to veterans who have found personal or professional success, or those who are charting a path toward it. We were motivated by a landmark survey of post 9-11 veterans. Of the 2.6 million Americans dispatched to fight in Iraq or Afghanistan or in support of the wars, more than half today say their physical or mental health is worse than before they deployed. 18% of them say they were severely injured while at war. One in two know a fellow service member who's attempted or committed suicide. And one and a half million of them say their needs today are not being met by the federal government. But when you ask them, given everything you know about the ardors of deployment, the dangers of combat, the sacrifice you had to make, would you do it all over again? When they were asked this, guess how many people, how many of them said they would? 90%. But what really amazed us was when we asked them about the country they have so loyally served. 55% of them said they feel disconnected from civilian life in America today. How could this be? The country that they have so nobly, bravely served feels so alien to them. It's because of this giant divide between our civilian and our military populations. You know, we thank them for their service. We applaud them at sporting events. But how much do we really know them and what they did? Less than 1% of our countrymen have served in the military and deployed since 9-11. Less than 1%.
add their family members to the mix, still less than 5% of our population. Most people are disconnected from our military. So most of our veterans are home now. Why does it matter? Well, it's more important than ever. They don't need our care packages and quilts anymore. They need to come back to a country that values their service, that recognizes the skills and values, discipline they've acquired, and then gives them a chance, gives them an opportunity to succeed. They need to come back home to a country that feels connected to them. It's too... too. Instead of focusing, instead of focusing on how we can help our veterans, we need, to, we need to broaden the discussion. I dare say we need to flip it. We need our veterans to help us become better Americans. Consider some facts about our modern veterans. They volunteer on average about 160 hours a year. That's 25% more than non-veterans. About 18% of them are involved in civic organizations, compared to just 6% of non-veterans. Veterans vote at higher rates than non-veterans. They're more trusting of their neighbors than non-veterans. It's time we all learn something from them, from veterans who are members of the Mission Continues, a group that organizes our returning service members to keep serving in the communities they're from after they take off their uniforms, from veterans who've traded their camouflage for the uniforms of police officers and firefighters, for veterans who are members of town councils and school boards and even the Congress. From veterans like David Ocklander. David Ocklander has spent more than 20 years in the US Army. In 2010, he commanded 1,000 paratroopers in one of the most dangerous parts of southern Afghanistan. When he came home, he was assigned to a job at the Pentagon. In his office, he had three computers. Two of them were connected to a classified Department of Defense network that gave him access to, among other things, daily reports of casualties in Afghanistan. His third computer was connected to the public internet. And his eyes often were drawn to news reports from Chicago, where he had spent some time growing up. He kept seeing stories of gun violence in Chicago, of gun violence claiming the lives of young people in Chicago. And so he came to recognize, actually, in 2011, well before it became national headlines, that we would lose more young people to gun violence in Chicago than we would to Taliban attacks in Afghanistan. And so David Ocklander made a decision. He decided to retire from the army. And instead of just living off his military pension or getting a cushy job with a defense contractor, he moved his family to Chicago, figuring that everything he knew about leading young people, his skills, his values and ethics, could be of use in that city. So he set out to become a teacher, and he did. Today, he's the principal of a high school in inner city Detroit. David Ocklander is my hero, not just for what he did in the army, but for what he's doing today. With so many Americans disconnected from our military, most people don't recognize what many of our veterans are doing back here on the home front. And even those who are injured, in many cases, can have an enormously positive impact on the communities in which they're living. They don't recognize that our veterans are doing amazing things in the world of government and business and healthcare and education and service, community service and public service. Service is in their blood. This wasn't a draft army that went to war after 9-11. These were all men and women who put up their hands to serve. And now that they're back home, they haven't lost that service ethos. It's remarkable. These men and women who've given so much want to keep on giving. They go off to war. They come home. They still outshine us. So it's time to think differently about our veterans. Let's be honest. Saying thank you for your service isn't enough. If we truly want to honor our veterans, it's time to follow their example. It's time to create a country 
that's worthy of their service and their sacrifice. Thank you very much.